So Test Media, we started as a collective, started meeting in 1999. I invited six people that were living and working in the community, six artists. Some of them had involved work in the community before, some of them were just independent practicing artists. And I had just moved to the neighborhood. I moved from New York. I was living in the downtown east side, on the lower east side of New York, which is facing and had faced uh, similar practices then, which is all completely gentrified now, the east side, especially in the lower east side. And so I, I moved here about 97 and 99, I moved to the downtown east side. So we started in 2000, in May, spring of 2000, in workshops at the Carnegie Center. They were really brought in the painting and video workshops, and the main emphasis was for helping people develop representations of themselves. And through the process of working with people in video and, 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 and showing them how to use the equipment and they can take each other and us take with them. We had discussions that we started forming an archive of the videotapes. We had about, well, we had about 75 hour, hour and a half interviews with people from that time up until 2005. And at the beginning stages, we were working in that Carnegie, Carnegie project room and it was quite boring. There was a blackboard and there was windows and curtains. So, uh, Bernadette came, Bernadette Fan, one of the founders of the early members, she came up with the idea of uh, doing paintings for backdrops. So we did a series of private paintings that some people call the community that so we've shown them around. We used them initially for backdrops of the videotaping process. And these paintings were all done collaboratively, so it turned into a focal point of the workshops where people would drop in and we'd have these five foot by ten foot or two and a half meter by whatever, three meters, I don't know, that's not my, my, uh, my generation. Um, and we would sit around and people would just drop in, or whether they were intending to come or not, or they would drop in, and we would sit around and we'd start painting and have tea, and it was a way to engage people off the street and to start developing ideas of representation. And also, when people are working around these tables, for to be able to discuss like negotiation of space, like, very specifically of this painting, and talk about you know transgressing or sharing in different areas of the painting and using that sort of metaphorically and literally as well. So we developed a series of paintings that we used in, in further workshops, both on the downtown east side and when we were invited to other institutions outside of Vancouver or elsewhere to uh, help other people start their workshops. Um, so that we continued doing that in, for about four or five years, and then slowly people started leaving, going to graduate school, or just leaving the neighborhood, or being more involved with uh, money-making work because this was all volunteer work. And this is this is us at the end, is Ali and me <laughs> trying to figure out now what to do with the archive. We we tried for a couple of years to restart, to recommence uh, the workshops, and we had a few public meetings where 20, 30 people would come sometimes. And, and through all that, we eventually realized that what was needed most was the was a sustainable downtown east side art center for residents and members of the community to help support them, not just with workshops like we were doing on a once a week basis or temporary workshops, but to develop a, a permanent facility where people can store their tools, they can store their work so they wouldn't have to store it under their beds or under shopping carts, and also provide a venue for people to sell their work so that they wouldn't have to just rely on going to the bar and trying to get whatever they could for it to have a sustainable, you know, ongoing um, income. So we worked, we, we helped found and started the Community Arts Network with a number of people here and a number of representatives of organizations. And the aim of, of the Community Arts Network was to try to, what I thought the aim was, was to try to come up with this, it was an art center that was one of the main focuses uh, like I described for all these practices to take place for sales, for exhibition, distribution, workshops, a place where anybody could come in out of the rain and have materials at their disposal for work for you to start painting and just hanging out, and also for ongoing support networks and for all types of other events to, to take place. So we worked on it with the Community Arts Network trying to develop that over a period of four or five years. And uh, people uh, started gravitating toward, there was a lot of issues involved. One of them was, one of the main issues, which is important, was that we had thought that we could mix representatives of organizations and collectives with members, independent members of the community, independent artists and cultural workers, and that we would have all had equal voice. So I think that sort of helped. I, don't, I think the organizations that were involved, a number of the more established ones, uh, weren't so comfortable with that in the long run. And anyways, people started gravitating out of the community arts network. And that 
more or less dissolved uh, in about 2009, 2010. So that's, that's a bit of background for us. And is there anything you want to add there? OK. And so that's sort of uh, another reason that sort of led us into trying to organize this. But one thing that we did, we did it from the beginning to the end with Test Media. Uh, I mean, we relied on a lot of local knowledge and the people that have come and worked before us, and, and including many people with the publisher and others, of you know, what was needed and what could be done. But it was always with the emphasis of having to engage our practice, of making people collectively collaborate over whatever, where people have came together to do something that we wouldn't produce normally in our studios. So it's always about helping people, facilitating expressions and representations of people that we're working with. So that's, that's us. Uh, now I'm not going to really 